Hey, welcome to another video on Emacs goodies and today we're going to talk, talk about strokes mode. Now strokes mode lets you control Emacs via mouse strokes, which is interesting. Let's go ahead and see how that's done. Now I'm not going to show my configuration file this time because I don't use this package and I don't and it's, there's not a lot to configure. Most of the defaults are mainly fine. So I'm just going to show you how it works. So let's go over to the scratch buffer since I need something. Uh, scratch buffer. Yes. So we are going to create a mouse stroke that pretty much copies the region into the into the kill ring. So how do we do that? But first, we need to enable strokes mode because otherwise it won't work. Strokes mode. Boom. As you can see in the mini buffer, it's enabled. If you want to learn how to use it, it comes with a handy little helper function called strokes help which is essentially a help buffer that gives you a little mini tutorial as how to use it. We're not going to go over this video because I'm basically going to give you the video version of it. And I need to disable type break mode because otherwise it's going to bug me to take a break while in the, video, in the middle of the video. Okay, sorry for that. Now, let's go ahead and define a mouse stroke and map it to what we just said, kill region. So how do we do that? We do strokes, global set stroke. So as you can see, I'm taken to a node buffer called strokes and I'm going to gently stroke or uh, create the mouse stroke of a C for copy and region and kill, copy region as kill. So with, I'm going to press and hold down the left click and then just do the C and then once I'm done, I just right click and it will close the buffer and it will ask me to map it. So I did the C, I right click, it's now asking me to map it. I'm going to do copy region as kill. It's already highlighted, so I'm just going to press enter. Boom, there you go. It is mapped now. So if I highlight this section and I do shift and press and hold the mouse wheel, which is very important, you do shift, press and hold. Do not just click, you have to press and hold. So when I press and hold, it's gonna show up a new buffer and I'm gonna do the stroke. And once I'm done with the stroke, I just let go of the mouse, let go of the mouse wheel and it will try to map it and if everything works it will copy it to the kill ring so let's go ahead so shift mouse wheel as you can see i'm holding it down right now i'm going to do the c i'm going to let go and if everything comes out right it should mimic something over here as to the command that it mapped to if it couldn't find anything it will say something it will say a message about configuring something else to help you get more precision but right now it did it and recognized it and it worked well, how do we know it worked? Well, let's do control Y to yank. And as you can see, it is already in my kill ring buffer. So this is beautiful. We can definitely do a lot more complex commands. For example, the copy and kill region that we just did is an example of a single stroke. There is a command called complex. Let's see, strokes, global, uh, complex, do complex stroke. So this will let you do a command with multiple strokes so you can let go of the of the mouse and for example create an X because you can't just create an X in a single stroke you have to let go and then stroke again. So you can do a command like that or as the documentation says this might be handy for creating Japanese Korean symbols or anything like that where t those type of uh, inputs would be useful to you to map. But yes, things like that. We're not going to demo that because from my experience of testing it out, it doesn't work that well. It looks like you have to configure or mess around with the configuration option as to how precise you want it to be. And for this video, that might be just a little too long. But anyways, well, it might be too long to narrow it down to exactly how you want it. So that'll be just a little homework or challenge up to you if you find this useful. But yes, now. Let's go ahead and to the other sections. So let's say you have a list of strokes you've defined and you're saying, hey, I forgot what strokes are available for me. You can also do meta x strokes list strokes and it will show the command and the stroke. So the little red dot right here to see. So that's pretty much how it knows or at least how you can view what it does. You can also do, uh, I believe strokes I'm probably forgetting, but I believe there's another buffer, uh, another command that you can do where you can input the stroke and then Emacs will tell you what that mapped to. It won't execute the command, it will just tell you what it mapped to. I believe that was also an option in here. So let's go ahead. Let's see, what else can I show you? Well, let's go ahead and jump into the customization things of the customization side of things. So 
actually, oops, uh, control F strokes mode. And if we jump into the file itself and then go into the dev custom section. So right now these, so you have the lighter mode, how you want it to define. So strokes, you can use what character, as you saw in the little strokes buffer, we were using the little at sign, at symbol to do it. You can put a little happy face on X, a dot, whatever you like, you know, just to change it. The strokes minimum match score. So changing this will also help you, will help Emacs try to figure out what type of stroke. So you can mess with it to either make it more precise, more loosely uh, up to that. We're not gonna mess with it in this video. And also the strokes resolution. So Emacs uses a nine by nine grid right now. If you put it nine, it makes it nine by nine. You, the most you can do is like 30 something. So the more grids you can do, the more complicated a command you can do as long as the, what the documentation says. So that might also be something that you want to save or mess around with as well. So these two, depending on how, how in depth you wanna go, are probably options that you'll be changing the most, but yes. Besides that, here's the strokes file in which you can save your strokes command that way in other Emacs sessions, you can just load them up and start using them. You can obviously change that and strokes buffer. This is the only one that depending on some people might want to change it. So if you're okay with a new buffer being popped up like the strokes buffer and then doing it right there, if you're okay with that, then just leave it as true. If you don't care about that strokes buffer and you just want to do it in place in the buffer you're looking at, set this to nil and you will just draw over that buffer. It won't display the at sign. It'll just, Emacs will just register whatever the mouse stroke you're doing and then try to map it. So that's something in case you don't want to always pop up the strokes buffer mode when you're doing stuff. And that's pretty much it for the customization sign customization side. There are other options, uh, other functions that you might want to look into. Uh, for example, describe, oh, here we go, describe scroll. This is the one that I was talking. Displays the command stroke, which maps to reading stroke interactively. So you just read the stroke, enter the stroke, and then Emacs will try to tell you. But yes, go ahead and look at this and see if there's anything else that piques your interest. Because personally, I think it's pretty cool. I don't think I will ever use this because I'm okay. I'm pretty comfortable on the keyboard. But as usual, Emacs is all about how you want to customize it. Let me know what you think, if you think you're going to use it. If you do use it, how many configurations options do you have it and how frequently do you use it? But yeah, this is pretty interesting. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.